welcoming visitors to our parish and to all those who are watching the Mass in their homes. My name is Pat Waters. Today we celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand for our entrance and welcome. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your Holy for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the will of whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who shut in the door in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, and they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. Give thanks to the Lord, his steadfast love endures forever. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Give thanks to the Lord, his steadfast love endures forever. 
then they were glad when it grew calm and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the children of Abraham. Yeah, they give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love. and sisters, the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. scary to me than not being able to breathe. 
and you've seen you see movies where somehow somebody ends up under the water, and uh, you hold your breath, and you're with them, and you're saying, okay, <laughs> okay, uh, oh my gosh, how do you hold your breath that long? And it's like, get out of the water. Okay, so th it's it is it's it's a frightening thing. So it would be the uh, the the fear and uh, the the real possibility then of drowning and losing your life, and so. The apostles here who are with Jesus are rightly troubled by this. And they approach the master who gives them a rather peculiar reply. First of all, after he calms things down, then he says, you know, why are you afraid? Um, well, it's because you're God and we're not. And uh, you're the almighty, all-powerful one. We are subject to just so many different influences. Um, you, I've heard that Canadians on, on a pilgrimage, especially if it's a little more rugged, are the worst. I've heard that we're the worst in the world. Oh, that bus wasn't air-conditioned. Oh, this is too rough. It was the matter with that. And how come you didn't... Apparently, we're supposed to be so polite in that, but I guess we get like that. I've heard this from different sources because it's a comfortable country. It's a fairly comfortable life. But look at why, why would there be complaints? Because there's so many things over which we have no control. Even if you wanted to write something down, you need a pen and a paper. There's just very little that we can do on our own. And uh, so it, it, it leaves us, hopefully, uh, we feel more powerful than we are because of, you know, machines that are working for us and when everything's working and ready, yeah, you actually feel quite empowered. Get behind the wheel of a car with a big engine. Oh my gosh, and you can just feel, you can just sense how empowered that person feels. They just floor it and uh, because we want to feel that way. Uh, we want to feel not just the adrenaline of that, we want to feel as though we have more uh, control over things than we do because we don't like this uncertainty. And, but for God, that's not at all the case. Everything is in His hands and He's capable of all things. And so Jesus then asks what, what could be a peculiar question to an average person, uh, something very natural for God to ask. Why are you afraid? You know that I am the benevolent one. You know that I am love itself and that I have created all things out of love and there's nothing that I've created that I despise as we see in the scriptures. And uh, your life is very precious to me. I've told you it's worth more than many sparrows, for example. Uh, I have a plan for you. All things will go according to my plan. To you, they'll look messy. To you, it looks like the, everything's going awry. You've experienced that it's not going to uh, resolve itself. You've experienced that in your personal lives. I know, I have too. I thought, how on earth is this going to work out? And yet, each and every time, ultimately, uh, the Lord has taken care of it. Uh, sometimes in a very, in a, um, in a very um, definite and complete way. Like you say, how is that person going to uh, keep living like um, uh, because of all of these issues or problems? Well, the person has died, actually. And I say, oh, well, that's, a, that's a convenient solution, actually. <laughs> but it's like, okay, that problem is solved for you, uh, for, like for them. Um, so he's got it, okay? He's got it. He's got your back and mine. But then, in addition to the personal problems and struggles, there are struggles that are with, uh, with uh, uh, the affiliations that we have. Look at us right now. Everybody knows the news right now. Everybody knows that, once again, the church is, is in crisis and experiencing some... Actually, this is a, a huge uh, mark now, once again, uh, once again, against us. Those who despise the institution to begin with are only having this undergirded and confirmed. And yet, and also there are those who, I'm talking about the um, discovery of the bodies in Kamloops at the residential school, and there are those about who are, who, who have some real affiliation to the church, 
And yet, would you believe that some have sent, I don't know how many, have sent letters to the bishop? Our bishop in our diocese, with um, our, the diocese has barely any um, uh, First Nations people in it, in this diocese. And, and so he has actually received at least one, maybe more, letters uh, asking to have their membership revoked in the church and their baptism removed if possible. Now, of course, these are, so much of this is, it's, it is based on an emotional response. Um, and it's also that, that, uh, that human tendency to throw the baby out of the bathwater. Yes, uh, you'll read in my column, yes, shared responsibility by Canada and the, ch and the churches that were involved. The whole concept was a losing concept. I wonder, I haven't been able to get this through my research yet, but I'm wondering if people didn't, if we didn't have something similar like they do in the U.S. where they were thinking that people of color were less than people, but somehow or other through the colonial attitude and the paternalism, it was like, we've got the good stuff for you, we've got the best way for you to go and we're going to do it and we'll foist it on you and we're going to have the RCMP come and get you and so forth. Well, obviously, the starting point was awful. It's amazing that so many minds and so many people didn't really grasp that. But evidently, the times were different. So there is need for reconciliation. There, there will be, uh, they, we have called upon the Holy Father to offer an official apology that would be suitable and re well received, because it has happened before, but apparently the wording and so on hasn't been well received by everybody. Uh, but the bishops of Canada, uh, they, this was in the works for the last couple of years, but the pandemic slowed it down. And because the church is in at least 265 countries, like most of the countries of the world, to get the Pope into your country could take years, our bishop told us the other day. And there are problems all over the world. And so you, insults, persecution, Maybe you thought within yourself and you thought, wow, I just don't know about this institution. It has so many marks against it. And uh, there were mistakes, foolishness, stupidity, and downright evil because there were mere mortals in all of this. You and I can grasp that. I have no problem with sin. I reflect upon my own sins. I ask the Lord to show them to me. I'm quite aware of what goes on inside, and uh, some of it isn't too stellar. And I say, isn't that amazing? Like, I'm not, I don't say, okay, now you, at, um, at this point, you're all this and that. I don't condemn, because I'd be condemning myself. But friends, if you do hear a lot of this, the bishop had a great way. He said, look, it's going to take, it may take apology after apology. It, it will take, indeed, a definite amount of patience. Um, there was an incident at St. Alfred's. They had a little bit of a shrine that was out there. And uh, I guess CKTB had suggested that maybe you put children's shoes as a me memorial or as some kind of a, um, a display of solidarity or something. Well, they did that near their shrine. And then somebody, uh, a First Nations woman who was coming in to be helped with St. Vincent de Paul, uh, just laid into them. Oh, how, how, you know, why are you trying to make a spectacle of all of this? So it's going to be, it's just another very difficult time that we are and will be living through. We have so many different marks. That can get you down. But of course you would have a number of marks against you when you're so big and have been around for so long and have tried imperfectly to help so many. Obviously, if we were just sitting there doing nothing, none of this ever would have happened. But you and I also may have never come to the faith, you know? So forgive yourselves. For, I'm forgiving myself um, as part of this institution, as part of the body of Christ. And I would think that that person, out of emotion, who wrote that letter, do you really want to be severed from the body of Christ? Because that will also sever you from, from the head. And it's only Jesus Christ 
who can save you and me from our sins. I don't ever want to be separated, and I don't have to be separated from him. Because neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor, nor, nor uh, prince, no persecutions, uh, hunger, uh, thirst, nothing can come between us and the love of Jesus Christ, as St. Paul tells us. And so friends, this to me would be the latest serious storm. Just be patient, pray, and let your heart go out to um, residential school survivors and all who have suffered from ills and sin and evil. There's so much pain out there, eh? so much pain everywhere. Yeah, there's a big storm now. But Jesus says, and it looks like the ship is sinking. It really does. Like these things couldn't come at a worse time. It just seems, yeah, more and more water you're seeing. But wait, Jesus, you said that the church would remain until you returned. Well, indeed, it will. And so he says to us, a purified church, of course, a church that is more self-aware, a church that is willing and ready to walk with people as never before. And so he says to you and me, then why are you afraid? I am with you all days, even until the end of time. Residential schools, 
especially the 215 who died in Kamloops. May our Lord grant comfort and peace to the indigenous peoples in Canada who mourn, and may we, as a church, continue to work at reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as the pandemic releases its grip on our world by the practical measures in place, paralyzing or an irrational fear may subside so that we may live in peace, devoting our energies to loving and serving God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who call on the name of the Lord Jesus in their sufferings, that they may experience God's healing power. We remember in a special way, Teresa Montana, Trevor Mango, David Landold, and Jan Rogers Anderson. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in faith, especially Deb Montford, Nathaniel Charles Noel, and Carl Purser, that they may see God face to face. We also pray for the repose of the souls of William and Catherine Burnett. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have constantly assured your people that they need never be afraid since you are here to sustain us. Let your Holy Spirit remind us of your past works to inspire in us a future filled with hope and confidence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes, God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your Son. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our hope, Gerard, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, and gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. <clears throat> when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven,
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Your spirit. Lamb of God, take the ways of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take the ways of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take the ways of the world and have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I do not believe that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. My dearest Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of yourself. We ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, this is Father's Day weekend, and we have a special blessing over all of our gentlemen. Lord our God, maker, of, maker and father of all, we thank you for the lives of these sons of yours, whom you have called into your family of believers. Each of them has been created to serve you by remaining obedient to your commandments and seeking to make you known and loved by those entrusted to their care. To many you have given the call to natural fatherhood, leading their families in the ways of holiness, faith, and truth. Hear the prayers they raise up for their wives and children, and keep them mindful of the vital role they play in your plan of salvation. And grant comfort to fathers who mourn the loss of children through death. To these men of faith you have made known your expectation to treat each of your people with respect and dignity, seeking to bring out the best in each individual and working for the well-being of the entire community. Heavenly Father, give these men the courage to stand up for what is right, to defend the rights of the most vulnerable in our society, and to be credible witnesses of the gospel of Christ by all they say and do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into the hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seek the universe of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.